bucket of hydraulic oil, especially when it's just leaking all over the electrical connectors. Okay, all right, I'm backing up. Just because the doors are open, would appreciate if you guys asked if they could crawl around inside. Oh, sorry. Mm. Don't worry too much about that. It is April 3rd, 2024, which means that it is time to bring Chainsmoker out for the first time of the year. And that is because it is what is probably Calgary's most well-known car show, as it is a traveling car show, the world of wheels. However, the thing about being in Calgary is that we get to deal with this. <laughs> Where I'd love to be driving Chainsmoker right now, and that was the plan. We got hit this morning with a snowfall warning and apparently there is 15 to 30 centimeters on the way. So that's just great. <laughs> All right, all loaded up and ready to go. Kind of an interesting time of year to have a car show, but it's always a car show out here. <laughs> I have made it inside and we've got some beautiful rides in here. Some really nice trucks and cars. Some guys that are really doing it right. And then we've got me with my literally broken wooden ramps. Don't worry about that, that, uh, that'll be fine. Just here manhandling these by myself, but you know, gets her done. I'm more of a blue collar car collector than a white collar car collector like most of these guys in here are. I left yesterday after dropping Chain Smoker off in its spot, and when I showed up this morning, it was surrounded by these poles, which is like looks really nice and fancy, but I don't know. When I'm at a car show, I kind of like to come up to the car and look at it and not touch it. And I understand that a lot of people do like to touch, and that's probably the reason that these went up in the first place. But you know what? I think I'm gonna take these down so that people can get closer and like taking photos. Pole right there doesn't quite do it so i think it's doing it an injustice to have it like that so all right it is decreed these poles are coming down all right we've got the support bars down and they have just been doing a little photo shoot so we got the entire pinup collection over here enjoying the show so let's enjoy it together let's do a walk around here and check out everything else that the world of wheels in calgary has to offer there is some really cool stuff here and some not so cool stuff starting literally in the back corner over here we have got two beautiful tea buckets twin tea buckets owned by the same dude so i guess he just couldn't have enough of one and he had to have two i can't relate with that at all <laughs> flash to all of the double units in my collection. Fat supercharger on there. Big fat tires. Not too much to this car other than horsepower and traction. This thing is super cool. I was chatting with the owner. He's right there. He's in another conversation, but he built this thing by wood strips, like as if it was an old boat. 4,000 feet of cherry wood. All hand done. There's the inside of it, strip by strip. And then you fiberglass over top of that. All of this is fiberglass over. If you look really close, you can see the strips of fiberglass. It is absolutely stunning. This thing is exceptional and it's a timeless piece. And then we come up to Chainsmoker. If you look close, all the welds are all behind. This is all V-bar tire chain, the compound turbos, fully built 12 valve, Japanese chef knives in the door handle. It's got the Gladius Damascus shifter blade. It's got the Spanish Toledo drift brake, the e-brake from a forerunner. You pull it up and then you twist it and push it back down. That would normally have been under the dash there and we took that mechanism and put it underneath the seat. Little sword on the antenna there to top it off. Fully done interior, built for comfort because the plan is to do a Euro trip with this thing eventually. Fender skirts are actually the only part on the whole ride that are not fully welded and they've got clips here so that if you need to change the tire, it's not hard. Coming back here, it's got an 1800s treasure chest, I guess you could call that, trunk. 
inside of that it's got all the batteries all the air suspension stuff and then up top on here it's actually got some extra storage space the rear bumper swoops back and then it has this little step here so it's actually supposed to look like harley bags that was the original design for it how it swoops back all the panels are original all the patina roll cage there which has one-way art swooping around and then the other way is strength and then they kind of encompass into one it's also kind of supposed to be like the rifling of a barrel when you're looking down at 14 inch c notch air suspension you can kind of see the bags from down there it goes up about a foot just because the doors are open, I would appreciate if you guys asked if they could crawl around inside. Oh, sorry. You know, just as car show etiquette, it is better to, to ask first. And that's what happens when you don't have the surrounding things around it, but you know. And then coming up front here, you can see the stack structure with all the roll and coal coming back. And we've got the beautiful intake manifold, which was made by Kale. He did all the engine work up top here. What we're going to do for version three is we're going to do all of that in pie cut titanium and probably do a triple turbo setup. Two 60 liter fuel tanks in the back. And the question that everybody asks, how much does it weigh? Well, it is actually 6,300 pounds, much lighter than what you'd expect. It weighs less than a cyber truck less than a new 2500 silverado gas truck because there's not a whole lot to it it's just a sheet metal body a dana 80 rear end and a bunch of chains and a 12 valve cummins and that's about where all the weight comes from we've got a pretty sweet gasser here supercharged very old school definitely appreciate this for what it is isn't that an interesting front end looks like some little french thing but detroit industrial vehicle company has anybody ever even heard of that i sure haven't cool mini truck here she low, she real low. It's got a C notch there, he's showing it all off back here. That's interesting, that looks like a structural air tank, I guess. That's a new one, pretty cool. You can see his four length, there's his bags. Out of all of these spots here, I think this place, it gets me. <laughs> this is what my property looks like, except without as cool of cars. Gotta love Alberta. Oh yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy to see how the Canadian car community feels about <laughs> that guy. What's so popular? Why, the Hot Wheels booth, of course. Look at this, it's a zoo in there. Who doesn't love Hot Wheels? It's the attainable car when so many of these are unfortunately unattainable. Here's the line to see Flava Flav. This guy's getting his clock signed as he should. What's the clock that Flava Flav is wearing today? We got him up with the pinup girls now. Oh, he's got a nice little shiny red clock on today. And now he's surrounded by beautiful women. Look at that. Flava Flav! <laughs> awesome. A couple beautiful Impalas here. There's not a whole lot of four door. No, this is kind of more of the boomer area that they love their two doors and i like them too don't get me wrong but maybe it's just because there are no two doors available so i'm kind of just collecting mainly four doors but i love my sedans what can i say that's what i'm surrounding my pond with right now i'll be making a video very shortly with those all in there uh, i have to admit i bought a ticket for the raffle for this car so you know just uh stay tuned for when i inevitably go and pick that up when i win it obviously i love the color of this it is absolutely mint definitely appreciate the level of craftsmanship in these guys and then right across from that beautiful c10 ls swap the world of course pretty old plymouth truck here this thing will be from the 30s 34 wow gotta love it this is almost exactly like my jeep commander jeepster commando holy gotta stop screwing that up really cool this is obviously all frame off it's just the body that's original and he actually built these fenders for it too and he built over fenders that attached to the body so he would have just cut out all the rest oh yeah you can see the cut lines in there it's a great way to do it i really like that idea and then he built the mountain view into there and i know you can tell which model this was i think that this would have been a convertible just like mine because of this little window here so the convertible would have come up over that and then this would have come up and this would have come up and then we got this thing i remember this thing when i was a kid i don't think i ever wrote it then and i'm not gonna ride it now but, but I, all the power to him for still going there you can see all the hydraulic motors down there Pretty interesting that this thing is still one of the few things technologically that's still sticking around. I don't know, like, are you trusting that? 
I don't know, it's not like it's gonna do too much damage even if it fell completely off. Hopefully there's no update about that. Although, I don't think that there's supposed to be like a bucket of hydraulic oil. That, uh, that doesn't instill a lot of confidence. <laughs> Especially when it's just leaking all over the electrical connectors. Oh my God, okay, all right. I'm backing up from this thing. Oh my god. I mean, it's lasted 30 years. Viper SRT 10 truck with a nice big fat turbo on there. That's pretty sweet. This thing's probably pretty fun. I've walked the show about 10 times and every time that I have, this AMC Gremlin owner right here has been having another conversation with somebody else about this car. And you know what? I respect that so much. Just hanging out, ready to answer absolutely any questions about it. And it is a beautiful ride, so it is well justified. Quick question for you. Did you get these stickers reproduced? Yeah, you can. Okay, because, yeah, I was just noticing that it was painted underneath it, and I was wondering how you did that. That yeah. is, it's awesome. All the little touches like that, you know, yeah, that right? that's important. Yeah. It means a lot. We never really came back here with a 401, so that's cool. But it's oh, cool because it just says 401. Cool. And the cool Willys. This thing is like, oh, gee, too. I love this. This thing is built exactly the way that it would have been back in the day, except this is actually much better than it would have been built because these were built very hastily for the army back then and this one's obviously been touched with a lot of love and care this thing is absolutely exceptional wow look at how beautiful this truck is it is perfection also much better than it would have been originally this is an awesome display probably one of my favorites here it's all the little mini bikes these things are tiny like look at this tiny little mini bike with the sidecar and the tiny little trike Tiny little chrome one, tiny little gold one, tiny little one with a big fuel tank. This thing probably was raced. Like, look at how cool that is. I'd love to race on that. And then of course, there's lots of muscle cars. Pretty much all of them coupes or convertibles. Very few sedan. That's just what people were restoring. That's the reason that the coupes don't exist on farms anymore. Got a little JDM representation here, MR2, Civic. Nice Integra, probably a Type R, definitely a Type R. This is a body swap Mustang. And then this is a body swap Mustang, except this body swap Mustang is a little bit different than what you're seeing here because it is a pickup truck. <laughs> Whoa, this thing is very wild. I have not seen this transformation done before. What do you guys think? It's interesting. I love that it's somebody's vision come to life. Flare out of it like the old school pickup trucks had. It's got a spoiler because it's a Mustang and obviously it's got the Cobra colors on it. This is all one piece here. There's no line. So this, all of this is, and then all built into the fenders, into the side skirts, which is then built into the cab. And then the cab is built into the box. So from the rear bumper to the front bumper is all one piece. That is wild. It'd be a nightmare to hit a curb with. You could freeze frame that if you want to know more. Got the engine building contest going on. What they're doing is they're putting two engines together and they're timing them. Been watching it all weekend here. It's, it takes about 10 minutes for them to do. Beautiful old truck here. You can tell that this was done afterwards, which I, whatever it is what it is, it's called Fotina. Just because of the way that the pattern is, it looks like it was kind of like splotched on. And then you can tell that this back here, this is original patina. Just through the fade and the way that it looks like that is really cool and then they just matched it and they did a pretty good job Ooh, a beautiful interior too look at that that is fully done this is some style right here the side of it reminds me a lot of my Packard it's just crazy to think of what that thing would have looked like in its day you know what's kind of funny is we've got the vintage sports car club of Calgary here and they've got these vintage sports cars and now for somebody like me who was born in the late 80s these are just regular sports cars but to Gen Z these are now vintage sports cars not too long before these ones will be showing in the same booth as those ones Representing the Calgary Firebird Club, we've got the Calgary Mustang Club, the American Motors Club, representing in their little clicks. I don't fit in anywhere. <laughs> kind of cool, he's got the blue tennis balls in there so that people don't go sticking stuff into the intake. <laughs> like playing one of the carnival games, trying to get something in there. And this guy's done little mini basketballs. <laughs> into the velocity stacks. That's cool. Matches the interior color. Well, pretty much. Peanut butter guts. Beautiful old Corvette here. It was done exceptionally well. Uh, maybe the speakers I don't know about, but really, really nice. I don't know how I feel about this whole shark thing, though. I guess the kids probably like it, and that's important. 
What do you think about that? And of course, you gotta have a dragster. What a terrifying ride that must be, but one of the coolest things a human can experience, I bet. One thing that this show is lacking is Brodozer mall crawler style trucks. This is the closest thing to it, and this is not close to it at all. This thing's got four wheel steer, and it's got big, meaty mud tires on it. Big, meaty mud tires. Big meaty mud tires. Wow, that's hard to say. To be fair, it doesn't really look like it's been used too much. Oh, kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably been out. This thing is awesome. I'm just surprised that there's no big trucks. But next year that'll be changed and it'll be with the Mega Mini. Hopefully it makes its way here and it's done by this point in time. God, it better be. Hopefully it takes the show by storm, although this is kind of like a boomer show, but whatever. Hopefully everybody likes it. You know, it'll probably fail miserably here, but that's okay with me too. What's faster, this one or the other yellow one in the corner? Oh, wow, okay. Okay, all right, well, that answers that. A lot of engine, beautifully well done too. Like all of the fitment is really nice. Paint looks good, beautiful car. Then we've got the NASCARs over here, even a little mini NASCAR. How lucky is that kid that gets screwed around in that thing? This is a pickup with a convertible top, mini truck style. And I mean, I guess it is a mini truck, but well, not really, it's a C10. Oh, it's a Jimmy, Jimmy. Oh, okay, so this had a removable top in the first place. Oh, that's awesome. There's all the air suspension components, 90s Skyline, beautiful midnight purple paint on this thing. And then beside it, a GT500, old school Mustang, and then we've got a Volvo that I've never even heard of from the 50s. Pretty nice wide range of stuff here. A sweet crew cab ram with the 12 valve in it and a P-pump. This is a first generation. They've kept the original body with the original patina, which is pretty cool. Always appreciate that. I mean, here we got a six-speed tranny. So that's got to be a NV5600 then. That's neat. Interior looks really well done. Everything's super clean. Like, look at how clean the carpet is in there. It's immaculate. And then got the beat up old body. It's nice to not have to worry about getting a rock chip. That's how I feel with Chainsmoker, at least. We've got a 60s Dodge Charger, like from the Dukes of Hazard, over here in orange, of course. And then over here, we've got a 60s Dodge Charger. And then we've got a 60s Dodge Charger in orange, of course. 50s Fargo here, much like my green one in my front yard. The owner here, his name is Jack, and he has had it since 1955. He lovingly restored it just a few years ago and he drives it often. He lives in a small town, so he says everybody around that town just knows who he is, see him cruising around, give him a wave, and he said he couldn't be happier, and I agree. Not a lot of supercar representation here, but got a nice McLaren 570 GT. Forgive me for not knowing a lot about McLarens. They're cool. I'm sure that it's a lot of fun to drive. Rocky Mountain Motorsports has a setup here. This is the racetrack. That's where I ride my motorcycle. Gas Monkey Camaro. Yes. It is that Camaro. Check that out. How fun would that be to drive? Looks like it puts down a lot of power. I don't see any turn signals, so I'm not sure if this is street legal. I'm gonna go with no. This thing is sweet. This is like race prep ready. He's got his little trailer there. He throws all his gear in it and heads to the racetrack. Drives it on the street, presumably. Oh, does it have headlights? Yeah, it's all down there. I see turn signals too. <laughs> If that counts as a turn signal, I would assume it probably does. Massive supercharger on there. This thing is cool, I bet that it tears. And then we've got an Aston Martin Vantage, Mansory Edition. Beautiful car, Henrik Fisker is the one that designed it. And it was so beautiful that I had to add one to my collection. So, you know, I'm once again, probably a little biased. This little Miata here is pretty cool. It's got a Ford V8 engine in it. That's wild, especially the fact that it has a 215 rear tire. That thing is tiny. <laughs> so this thing would just drift like nobody's business. And here we have the other yellow RX-7. The Viper engine, that's pretty dope. They're both beautiful vehicles. I think I like this orangey yellow a little bit more than the other color of the other one. But I like that this one's like a Canadian car. What kind of body kit is it? I don't see a sign that says anything about it. So I'm not gonna be able to tell you. I think this guy's a YouTuber. Actually, I know that this guy's a YouTuber, but I don't know anything about him. At some point, the YouTuber Bad Chad came by, which is pretty cool. Unfortunately, I wasn't there to chat with him, but he did post about Chainsmoker on his Facebook here, and he did seem to like it quite a bit, which is great. I would say she's diesel by the by the looks of what's going out there. I cannot see where the chain is welded together. They must have did it on the bottom side and then placed it on. Good idea. 
And then there's another YouTuber, the Cruise Culture Magazine, who came across Chainsmoker. And <laughs> unfortunately, they caught me a little bit lacking here. I was asleep and uh, he didn't want to wake me up, which was nice of him. But this is the shot that comes out of that. <laughs> And then from all the way over there, we've now made our way to the exact opposite corner of the show. And that's where they have Kevin set up here with his badass rat rod. Beautiful to see every single time. And I still see something new and then I forget what I've seen and then I get to see it again and enjoy it again. He's got quite the crowd around him too, which is great. This thing is a boat too. It's like 30 feet long. <laughs> and so is the wheelbase because the wheels are all the way up here. Technically, this is a mid-engine vehicle because the whole engine, not only just the center point, but the entire engine is behind the front wheels. That's all the vehicles. Now we've got awards, which would be nice if I won some sort of cash award, but I'm very highly doubting it because I'm not overly traditional. Although my class for this year was traditional rod pick up and then we're gonna roll out and I did not bring my truck and trailer today I took a cab down here and I am planning on driving home so hopefully I make it home I have driven chain smoker a fair amount just not this year yet so we'll see how that goes I was just chatting with Kevin here telling him the story about the three kids that were crawling around in my unit wouldn't you know it he's had the exact same three kids crawling around in his truck obviously they didn't learn anything the first time around but that's just crazy everybody else though was really good super respectful followed proper etiquette the entire time very impressed by that so i'm not gonna let the few bad apples spoil it for the rest of them i'll keep the barricades down still but i guess it's best to watch it and at least i'm not as worried about somebody scratching it as some of these really nice rides where it would actually cause damage you know every single scratch adds a story to my ride but still not ideal you know what i'm saying i just did a full walk around of the show looking for imperfections in the rides and you know what i must say there are very few i am extremely impressed with the level of quality of vehicles at this show even compared to sema like there was more imperfections to be found there but then i thought about it for a moment and i also think i know why it's because these guys show the same vehicle that they built 10 years ago at the show every single year and they've had lots of time to perfect them and make them exactly the way that they want and the way that they should be which is great because that's how they should be shown however at sema most people like myself for version one of chain smoker are just in a savage rush building it for that show thinking that they've got lots more time than they need and then they run into the crunch at the end and the last five percent or so it's lost in the wind i don't think that's the case here although maybe i'm completely wrong and there's a totally other reason because it's weird that a calgary show has just such incredible vehicles like i cannot find a single thing wrong with this ride on that same point though Chainsmoker version 2 allowed me to spend the two years that I needed from 2019 to 2021 to make it what I consider perfect. Like it would be hard off to find problems. Although, I mean, it's a rat rod, so like, sure, there's lots of like rust and stuff, but you know, every link is perfect. Like I dare you to find a link that's not perfect. And if you do tell me, and I'll probably yell at you, but I won't because there isn't any. <laughs> All packed up with chairs and sign, and we're ready to roll out of here. Gonna head home. I gotta drive chain smoker for the first time of the year. This is gonna be awesome. Oh, rollout's one of my favorite parts. All the cool cars that get to go on the road right after is awesome. Oh yeah, just cruising. Couldn't get much better than this. <laughs> I just realized the last time that I drove chain smoker, I got it impounded which I was gonna make a video about because it was absolutely ridiculous. This is where I got pulled over. And now we're getting towed. But the cop didn't let out the body camera footage, even though I asked for it, I re heavily requested it. But uh, he also didn't show up to court, so I got it all thrown away, minus my tow fees and my trips downtown and whatnot. Cruising down Highway 1, so smooth. I'd hate to get a rock chip, you know? <laughs> Oh, I love pulling up to my house and seeing all of my toys. Oh, this is such a nice place to come home to. <laughs> oh, 